I know. I'm taking your spot. I'm sitting in front of the window and um, I have this little ottoman, which usually Faith jumps up on, but I'm using it to prop up my books. She does not appreciate it. Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, I'm going to be doing a vlog of the Thrills and Chills readathon. Is this lighting great? No. Are we gonna put up with it? Yes, because I'm too lazy to set up my tripod. Plus it's like kind of a sunny day. I, I had to lower the blinds slightly, otherwise the sun was just straight blinding me. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so as I was saying, I'm going to be partaking in the Thrills and Chills readathon. It is going to be taking place for 10 days and is being hosted by a bunch of awesome booktubers. I'll put links to all of them in the description down below if you're interested. Yeah, basically it's just focusing on reading thrillers and I've been wanting and looking forward to getting back into some thrillers so I had to take advantage of this. Caroline Johnson made this lovely little bingo card and I am going to try and get two bingos. First off let me give you a rundown of the books I am planning to read this week. So for the top center which is Backstabber, a book where a relationship goes bad, I'm going to be reading The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb and I honestly don't know a ton about this. I think it's about this woman who moves to a new town and she ends up getting involved Involved with all of these other like suburban housewives however they're all like big drinkers and like going shooting and then somebody ends up dead I saw on book of the month's Instagram that if you like desperate housewives you'll like this and yes that show is crazy but it's a good time so I'm excited for this one the center of the board is a free space so I'm gonna take advantage of that one and then at the bottom of that row is under the influence a influencers recommendation and for this one I'm gonna be going with oh I did not look up the author name but this is The Swede and it is the first in the Ernst Grip series. It seems like it's kind of a spy political thriller sort of thing and I have already started this one. I am very interested. It has a funky layout. I'm going to talk more about that later. In this story we are following Ernst who is a Swedish security person. Um, I think he's supposed to be like the Swedish version of the FBI and he gets pulled into this case that involves terrorism in the US and the FBI thinks the person responsible might be Swedish, which is why he gets pulled in. Then I'm also gonna be doing that bottom row for my second bingo and the first one is Get Out, a character who is running from their past and for that I'm going with Girl A by Abigail Dean. I believe this story is following a woman whose parents were actually serial killers really. <laughs> I believe the story is following a woman whose parents were serial killers and she and her siblings grew up in their house of horrors. Recently, I believe both of her parents have passed away and now she is finally going back to her house to kind of confront all of these terrible things she and her siblings lived through. I said in my book haul that this sounded a lot like the Fred and Rosemary West case. Well, I did some research. Turns out the author was actually influenced by that case. So... I was correct. Obviously under the influence is also the middle of that bingo so I'm not going to go over it again but next to that is Split, a book with multiple points of view and for this one I'm going with The Nothing Man by Christina. I should have looked up the author. I literally found out about this book today. I saw it on a video I was watching of Sam at Griff Reads. I'll put a link to her video right here and essentially she was saying that this is a story about a man who works at like a grocery store and he ends up picking up one of the books that is being sold there and it's this new true crime memoir about this woman who survived a serial killer and the serial killer has never been caught. Well, it turns out the serial killer is actually our main character. And then it alternates between his point of view and then the chapters from actually within the book that he's reading. So it's a book within a book. This one sounded really cool. Like I said, I needed another book for the bingo card and my library had it, so I took advantage. So that is all four books I am planning to read in the next 10 days. Let's see if I can actually do it. As I was saying, I am actually in the middle of the Swede. I think I'm pushing about four hours into the audiobook. I think it's like 10 hours long. And as I said, it's very much like a spy political thriller. I think it was originally written in Swedish and this has actually been translated into English. I'm not a big fan of the writing style, if I'm being completely honest. I, it feels a bit too stiff and is overtly detailed about things that I just don't think are 
particularly necessary. It's kind of reminiscent to that of, um, oh, what was it called? Dark Fields by Alan Glynn. I'm not sure if that's because of the author himself or if it's because of the translation, but that is kind of been a drawback. Along with that, the narrator on the audiobook, actually, he does weird pacing where when it comes to the narration, he speaks at one pace. When he does dialogue, he actually talks faster, which is kind of annoying since I'm listening at two times speed. So it makes it harder for me to like maintain listening if it's like alternating between dialogue and narration a lot. Oh my gosh. And it does annoy you. First off, we are actually alternating between two different timelines with Ernst. We have the current one where he is a part of the investigation into this terrorist attack, as well as a bit of his past where we are revealing some of his relationships. Uh, he is bisexual, which is why this was the pick for the Bi Book Club, so that makes sense. He has a, I don't want to say boyfriend because they aren't truly committed to each other, but he has a partner named Ben, and Ben is actually HIV positive, so that's been some interesting representation. and. Uh, uh, it's definitely sad to hear about all of the terrible things he has to do to make enough money to receive treatment, but it's interesting because I just was not expecting that in this like spy thriller. On top of that, we also actually have the perspectives of one of the people who was involved in the terrorist attack, and I believe it's this odd group who met in, I think, Thailand after a hurricane hit and are basically all angry because a bunch of loudmouth radicals are putting in the media that they think the hurricane was a punishment sent from God. They're all very angry about it because some of them lost people they care about or they were injured themselves, they lost their homes, yada yada yada. Faith hovered in dog hair right now. I'm kind of enjoying this one. There's a lot of intrigue with it because of the dual perspective and then also kind of the dual timelines, particularly in that of N, I have actually hit the point where we are starting to watch the buildup of their planning the terrorist attack slash bank robbery, which hasn't been mentioned at all in the Ernst point of view. Okay, I think that's it for now. I'm gonna officially wrap this up because someone really wants to go. So I'll talk to you guys later when I have either gotten further into the Swede or started a new book. Hey guys, so long time no see. Uh, it's been a hot minute since I've updated for this vlog, but here we are. I have surpassed the halfway point in the Swede now, and I'm still just having a hard time connecting with it. Like, I, the writing is just very stiff and formal. It really just is making it difficult to connect with the characters, and while this was labeled as a thriller, I really don't think it has been one. There's nothing that's really been getting my heart racing or having me truly just enthralled in what's happening. I've just been intrigued to see how the two timelines connect and now that I've actually seen it, I'm still not really sure how I feel. Anyway, I'm kind of recovering from getting my second COVID shot. Uh, definitely knocked me down this morning, but it's like raining and dreary out. So, you know, I made it like nice and cozy in my room. I put my fairy lights on. I have some uh, candles burning. I have some lo-fi music playing and I started into The Hunting Wives by May Cobb and I'm already intrigued. It's kind of like slice of life, stream of consciousness. We are following Sophie and she and her husband have recently moved to the small town in Texas. Shout out. And she is becoming obsessed with this really rich lady who is well known in the city and she is trying to enter this woman's circle of friends. Kind of obsessive, sort of weird, but also intriguing. I'm liking it thus far. The chapters are really short so it makes it very digestible and then like I said, it's pretty stream of consciousness so it's fairly easy to follow although i will say it was kind of weird at the very beginning because it bounced back and forth in timelines like it did a week before a week after a week before again and then yeah that was odd anyway i'm gonna read some more i got some tea it's gonna be nice and relaxing i will update you guys i don't know i'm not gonna make any promises this has been a very <laughs> slow moving vlog so Hey guys, so good news. I finally finished a book for this readathon. I finally finished The Swede and I really don't know if I would call this a thriller because again, no point was my heart racing. I was never freaking out trying to figure out what was going on. 
but I will admit the ending reveal did did catch me off guard and I, I, I was pretty shocked by it. I did enjoy that. So that's cool. Like that aspect. Don't know if I would really call this a thriller. Maybe more like a political mystery? Spy mystery kind of thing? I, I also don't know if I'd quite call it a spy thing. I, yeah. I, I can't label this book apparently. Along with that, I have surpassed 100 pages into The Hunting Wives and I've been really enjoying this. The relationship between the main character Sophie and this like rich Regina George S character named Margot, <laughs> it's like a toxic friendship and watching it you just know it's gonna be a train wreck but you can't look away. That's how this is. Honestly, equating this to Desperate Housewives truly yeah, it made sense. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> also, kind of like more adult murdery mean girls. Although I, I always call Heathers like a murdery mean girl. So like kind of the same thing, but it's not because of a dude. It's just the ladies, at least for the time being. Then along with that, I have also started onto The Nothing Man and I'm really enjoying this. It's very enthralling and I'm pretty engaged with the story. I really like the perspective, not perspective, but I guess the mindset we are seeing from the author of the book within this story. And she kind of was a true crime fan. She mentions how when she was 12, she used to rent these movies that aren't specifically stated, but seem reminiscent to lifetime true crime stories. And she always thought the like, well, I know how to keep these things from happening to me, but it's so sad how she has that mindset, but then it ended up happening to her family. And it's always that whole thought process of like, you know bad things happen, but like you don't expect them to ever happen to you. Also along with that, seeing into the serial killer's mindset, who is now in his 60s, has gone this long without ever getting caught, honestly had to stop because he just didn't have the energy or the strength to continue doing these things to, vict to his victims and like, that's a terrifying thought process, but also really fascinating to read. So cute. she's cuddled up with my books. Oh, you can't really see it, but she's cuddling my books. That's so cute. But he definitely still kind of has like psychopathic tendencies. You can tell in like certain interactions he has with other characters and what his thought processes are, but then what he actually does and like the difference between them. Along with that, there's been some mentions of different Irish cases and I don't know if they're actual true crime stories or not. I am gonna try and search into them, but I think with what's been revealed to us so far of the Nothing Man's MO, he's kind of reminiscent to uh, the Golden State Killer, kind of, or like the Night Stalker also. I am heading over to Josh's here soon and we're gonna be kind of having a lazy night in, so I might be able to get some more read of this, plus I'll listen to the Nothing Man while I'm driving over, so four more days. All right, y'all, so I will talk to you again soon. Hey guys, so I have now finished two books. I finished listening to The Nothing Man while I was filming my plan with me for May and guys, that book was so good. It was so good. I really enjoyed it. I loved the way we were able to see into Eve's perspective, but it was still very limited because we were only really seeing what she had written in this book that she published. And even then, like, we could see Jim's the serial killer's commentary on what was being explained and then we would sometimes see things from his perspective where he would remember it in a different light and oh, I really loved the way she laid out the perspectives. It was so good. So good. And then on top of that also the ending like and probably the last 80% there was a twist caught me off guard had my jaw drop and then from there on probably three more twists happened each one of them would catch me off guard and I'd be like oh and oh it was so good I really think they all worked together well each of them was shocking but we're on an even playing field it wasn't like one outdid the other with that it didn't make it anticlimactic I think that's impressive like writing wise it's impressive that she managed to do that yeah it was it was really good
it was really good and I really loved the layout of this story. It's not something I'd seen before with a thriller in this like specific context because it kind of read like a true crime book on top of a thriller and adored that, adored it. It was great. Really recommend this one. 200 pages into The Hunting Wives now and these women are insane. They are crazy. I don't like a single one of them. They're all terrible people, but I am eating this shit up. I can't stop reading it. Although I will say there is one aspect of the story that I'm not really going to discuss because I think it would be spoilery, but it makes me so uncomfortable. And at those sections, I do kind of have to skim because from the prologue, we do know somebody dies but like we're not really sure who it is. Proud to say I did call who the victim was gonna be. It wasn't that surprising in all honesty but still. Now we get to watch as Sophie possibly tries to figure out what's happening. I'm not sure yet. Might be that. Might be like she is having to defend herself. I'm not not 100% sure which direction this is gonna go just yet. Then because I finished The Nothing Man I also picked up the audiobook for Girl A and it kind of seems as though what has been revealed so far is her father sort of became a religious fanatic and started to control every bit of the kids lives and the mother kind of just went along with it. It's it's still been fairly vague up until this point. I'm only like 20 pages in. I am really intrigued. I do think this one's gonna get pretty dark so I don't know if we'll finish it in like the next few days just because I can foresee myself having to like take breaks if this is really heavy. I knew it was a long shot when I went for four books in 10 days. Anyway, so yeah, that is it for right now. We are two books down and into the next two. Possibly we'll finish one of them by tomorrow. Hey guys, so it's officially the end of the Thrills and Chills readathon and I had a really great time doing this. I'm so glad I did. Give me a chance to prioritize some thrillers. Uh, some thrillers I hadn't been planning to read this month. Initially, I had a very different April TBR set out, but oh well, I am slightly a mood reader, so you know, things change. I did end up finishing The Hunting Wives and may I just say this book, she was insane. Insane. This was crazy. I didn't like a single person in this story. All of the main characters were absolutely terrible people, probably kind of alcoholics. The main character I often wanted to strangle because I think, and this is probably my biggest gripe of the story, she just didn't use her head. Like so often she just lacked logic and it also seemed like she just had no sense of self-preservation. <laughs> However, I really enjoyed the story. The layout of it was fantastic. I thought the mystery in the end was going to be really predictable, but I was definitely shocked by what ended up happening. I thought I kind of had a surprising theory that would have made sense, but what actually happened made so much more sense. Something also with this story that I just really loved is how she really created this very homey atmosphere. Maybe it's homey for me because this is set in Texas and like it's relatively close to me so I could identify with portions of it. But I think it's really impressive how she managed to get that vibe of a suburban housewife who like runs a lifestyle blog and is riding that line on hipstery and trying to be cool and maintain her youth. I was really impressed that her writing managed to just create that kind of a atmosphere around this story where that essentially seems like what all of these main characters are trying to do. The drama in this was insane. Sometimes a bit too much for me. I would occasionally have to put the book down because these rich ladies would just, they great they grate my gears a bit too much, but then I'd pick it back up and I'd be re-sucked into it all over again. It, it scratches that itch of the ridiculous gossip you just gotta hear about. And in the end, I think it was a very satisfying thriller. Towards the end of the story, I was really just blasting through that last like 50 pages. I could not put the book down. I actually stayed up late to finish it. In the end, I gave this four stars. Like I said, the lack of logic was probably my biggest complaint, but overall, I really enjoyed this story. It was a fun ride, even if, you know, you can't like a single character because they're all insane. I realized I did not actually give star ratings for the other two books I finished in this vlog, so first up was The Nothing Man and no, it wasn't. First up was The Swede, and I gave that one three stars. And then for The Nothing Man, I gave that one four stars. Finally, I had been planning to also read Girl A. I am about like 50 pages into it, but I'm 
thinking I might temporarily DNF this one just because I can tell it is very heavy and it's gonna be pretty dark handling some really serious themes. I was kind of in a reading slump at the beginning of the month because of like a similar theme in a different book that I was reading. I just wasn't in a great mindset for it then. I still don't really know if I am temporarily putting this one down, but I am looking forward to coming back to it because I am very intrigued to see how the story is going to play out in the end. Okay, so three out of four books. Not bad if I do say so myself. Let me know in the comments down below which of these that I read are you most interested in and let me know if you pick them up. As always, thank you so much for coming to my channel today, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Bye. Mm -hmm.